Hello and welcome to the data analysis part of the first year skills module. Now I've no doubt that many of you are sitting there thinking, what is the point of data analysis? Why is a data analysis module core to my degree? Well, by taking a science degree, you're really kind of beginning to learn to be a scientist. And this module is really at the core of what it is to be a scientist. Because science is not really about blowing things up or Higgs bosons or discovering new species of parrot. What unites scientists is a way of asking questions. Science is a toolkit for asking and answering questions, for evaluating evidence, and effectively for generating knowledge. And that's why employers like science degrees, because they give you what we like to call critical thinking skills. Over the course of your degree, you'll be trained to become professional bullshit detectors and generators of knowledge. And that's something that any employer will value. So how do we generate knowledge? Well, modern science proceeds according to something that we call the hypothetico-deductive method. But this has its roots all the way back in ancient Greece with a philosopher called Aristotle. And he proposed that there were two kinds of logical reasoning. There's deduction and induction. Deduction is a process where you start with a general principle or law that's already known, that relates one thing to another, such as all grooves live in the dark. And then you make a particular observation about one of those things. Brian is a group. And from those two premises, it then follows with complete certainty that Brian lives in the dark. So you've generated a new piece of knowledge that wasn't in the original premises. The problem with this kind of reasoning is that it doesn't really help us understand the world. We want to work out new general rules, not particulars. One feature of deduction is that it isn't able to generate new general principles of knowledge, only new particulars. So the second way that Aristotle proposed for generating knowledge, the second method of logical reasoning, is called inductive reasoning. And this is where we draw general conclusions based upon a bunch of particulars. So if you see a white swan, and then you see another white swan and another white swan, and you remember that the last hundred swans that you saw were white, and then you remember that, in fact, you've never seen a non-white swan. Aristotle reasoned that it was logically valid to draw the conclusion that all swans are white. Now, theoretically, this should be a wonderful tool for building our understanding of the world. But the fundamental problem with induction, the thing you have to remember about induction, is that it's rubbish. And a good example of why it's rubbish is precisely this swan example. Before white people discovered how to get to Australia, we had previously thought that all swans were white. And in fact, it was used as a textbook example of something that was self-evidently true. As soon as we got to Australia and found a black swans, suddenly we had to rewrite all of our philosophy books. One black swan was able to destroy the supposedly general truth that all swans are white. So where does that leave us with respect to creating knowledge? Well, after a lot of philosophical toing and froing about this problem of induction, um, eventually we realised, especially through the work of a man called Karl Popper in the 20th century, that in fact this process of falsification by which you know, one black swan can destroy an entire theory is in fact itself a powerful tool for creating knowledge. If you have a hypothesis that all swans are white, then seeing a million white swans won't get you any further towards proving that all swans are white. But one single black swan can completely destroy that hypothesis. So the hypothetico-deductive method begins by making a hypothesis, all swans are white, and then from this hypothesis we derive a prediction that anything that is a swan is also white. We then have the opportunity to generate new knowledge by finding a non-white swan and thereby rejecting our initial hypothesis that all swans are white. So effectively we try as hard as we can to disprove our initial hypothesis. And it's the hypotheses that survive 
repeated testing without being falsified that we gradually come to accept as more likely to be true. And this is the way science proceeds, a bit like an ice sculpture, by chipping away false hypotheses so that what is left by elimination is more likely to be the truth. Another way of thinking about this is a bit like Sherlock Holmes. Eliminate the impossible, and what is left must be the truth, or at least must contain the truth. OK, that's all very well and good, but that doesn't answer our question of why do we do data analysis in the first place? Can't we all just go home and generate knowledge by looking for black swans? Well, not quite. Because when we have a hypothesis to test, it turns out, who knew, that it's unfeasible to go and physically examine every single case where the hypothesis might apply. We have to take a sample from the population. And the sample is likely to be different from the population and so we're faced with questions like, how different is my sample likely to be from the population I'm trying to measure? And how many is enough for a sample in order for me to be confident about the effect that I'm trying to measure? To answer these questions, we need to be able to set that hypothetical deductive method into a proper framework and that is what was done by Ronald Fisher. And he is whom we'll meet in the next video, when we will talk about how to test a null hypothesis and what exactly is a p-value.